Hello, my friends, and welcome to today's Children's Liturgy of the Word. Today we are celebrating the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, which is the last Sunday in Ordinary Time for this liturgical year. Next week, we celebrate Christ the King, and the week after that, we start a new liturgical year with the beginning of Advent. So let's get started on our last celebration of ordinary time for this liturgical year. First reading, a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, I don't need to write you about the time or date when all this will happen. You surely know that the Lord's return will be as a thief coming at night. People will think they are safe and secure, but destruction will suddenly strike them, like the pains of a woman about to give birth, and they won't escape. My dear friends, you don't live in darkness, and so that day won't surprise you like a thief. All of you belong to the light and live in the day. We don't live in the night or belong to the dark. Others may sleep, but we should stay awake and be alert. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response phrase for this week's responsorial psalm is, The Lord is my light and my salvation. When I raise my hands, please say it with me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. You, Lord, are the light that keeps me safe. I am not afraid of anyone. You protect me and I have no fears. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Lord, I know I will live to see how kind you are. Trust the Lord. Be brave and strong and trust the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of today's gospel. For today's gospel acclamation, we will be singing Alleluia to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. You can sing with your voice or with your hands using American Sign Language. The sign for Alleluia is a le lu ya Please sing with me. Alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alle, alleluia, alle, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. May the word of God be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus told his disciples this story about the kingdom of God. The kingdom is like what happened when a man went away and put his three servants in charge of all he owned. The man knew what each servant could do. So he handed 5,000 coins to the first servant, 2,000 to the second, and 1,000 to the third. Then he left the country. Sometime later, the master of those servants returned. He called them in and asked them what, he had, what they had done with his money. The servant who had been given 5,000 coins brought them in with the 5,000 that he had earned. He said, Sir, you gave me 5,000 coins, and I have earned 5,000 more. Wonderful, his master replied. You are a good and faithful servant. I left you in charge of only a little, but now I will put you in charge of so much more. Come and share in my happiness. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Have you ever been given a gift of money? Maybe at Christmas or on your birthday? What do you do with that money? You might have gone out and spent it immediately on a toy, but I'm guessing your parents probably encouraged you to save it and to hold on to it and maybe put it with some more money later on until you were able to buy something really worthwhile, something more expensive and more useful, a toy that's gonna last for a while instead of something that you're gonna get bored of really quickly or that's gonna break really easily, right? But what if you just put the money in a piggy bank in your room and did nothing with it? How much money would be there the next time you counted it? Well, if I put $5 in my piggy bank, walked away for a month, and came right back to it, I would find $5 in my piggy bank. Right? Makes sense. Imagine though that you put that money in the bank in a savings account instead. On a savings account, you can earn something called interest, which means your money earns more money because the bank uses parts of your money and then gives it back to you as soon as you're ready for it. So they pay you a little bit for being able to use your money for that little bit of time. Now, if you were to do that with your money, you might put $5 in and get $10 out. Now, it would take a really long time for $5 to turn into 10, but it gives you an idea of what happens. That is called investing. Investing your money means using it to make more money. How else could you invest some money? Well, you could buy something called a stock or a share in a business. You could buy a piece of property or buy some jewelry, which would get more expensive over time because of something called inflation. And then you would have something that's worth even more money than you spent. You could buy a bond, which is when the government takes the money and guarantees that in so many years, that money will be worth twice the amount or three times the amount, however much that they guarantee your bond will be worth. So, in today's gospel reading, a master entrusts his servants with money. We read the children's liturgy version, which talks about thousands. But in the actual gospel reading, the sum of money is given in terms of talents, which we nowadays use that word to mean the gifts God gives us that we use like a talent for gymnastics or a talent for football or a talent for singing. But in this case, it means something more like a coin. So the servants are given talents. The first one receives five talents. The second one receives two talents. And the third one is given one talent. Now, in the story, some of the servants invest their money and earn more. The one we heard about in our children's reading was the first servant. He invested his five talents and earned five more to have a total of 10 talents to give back to his master. The last servant we didn't hear about. And that servant, he didn't use his talent wisely. He took that one talent, buried it in the ground, and did nothing with it. So when his master came back, the servant was only able to unbury the talent, dig it out of the ground, and give back to his master that one single talent. He did nothing with it to improve it, to grow it, to make it better. And this story is meant to teach us not about money in particular, but how we 
have been given gifts by God. Those gifts are more than money, more than uh, jewels and riches. Those talents are what God has given us to be able to do. We have the talent to sing. We have the talent to um, play soccer. We have the talent of being able to read well. We have the talent to teach others. We have the talent to be great at organizing stuff, or we have the talent to draw. And if we use those talents to serve God, then we can improve our talents, make them better, and use them to help others. If I'm a good reader, maybe I can show other people how to read or read stories to people who can't read. If I'm a good singer, I can sing songs to make other people happy. But if I'm a good cook, and instead of using that talent to cook for other people, I just never cook. I buy fast food, I never cook, I just let that talent waste away then I'm not using it to serve God or to help other people. And that's a total waste. Just like that last servant in today's story who buried his talent in the ground and did nothing with it. So I hope that you will go forward into the world and think about the gifts that you have been given and use them to help others, to make them happy, to make their life better and to show God in the world in that way. All right, friends, for today's activity, you're going to need a marker of any kind and a piece of paper. We're gonna keep it simple today. And we're going to turn this piece of paper into a frame of our a picture of ourselves doing something that shows our gifts that God has given us and how we use them. So I'm going to start by turning this into my picture frame and I'm going to go right along the edge of my paper and just draw a line and you can do this with any color. I went with black because I feel like it shows up nicely on the camera and works out very nice. And so the first line just goes along the edge. Do, 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 do. Trying to keep it as straight as possible, which isn't working very well for me today. That's okay. I know that nothing in life is perfect except God, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. And one more. Come on. All right. And then in each corner, I want to draw a line that is just about the same length. So I'm doing it about as wide as my fingertip because that's an easy measurement for me to use. And that line is just going to point straight from the corner to the middle of the page. And again, and one more here. Okay. The next step that I have is to connect all of these lines from the end of the line to the end of the line to the end of the line to the end of the line trying to draw my connecting lines as straight as possible which is not super easy on the longer sides because as I draw it gets farther and farther away it gets crookeder I feel like so it kind of looks like a frame, right? Now, the way that I'm really gonna turn it into a frame is I'm gonna take that line in the corner again and I'm gonna draw it once more about as long as my fingertip towards the middle. If you need to make it straight by going over the part you already drew again, you can do that. 
And I apologize because I know some of this is probably out of frame. Because I'm not paying a lot of attention to the camera. I'm paying attention to my artwork. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I lower my table. There we go. That solves that problem. Okay. Now you can see my whole frame picture here very easily. And I'm going to, again, connect the end points of those lines from the corners. Trying to draw a straight line if possible. Getting a ruler might help with this. That'd be a good idea. All right, so now it kind of looks like a frame, right? And in the middle of this frame, I want you to draw yourself using a gift that God has given you. And I think one of my gifts is that I am a pretty good reader. I'm able to read easily and fluently and with expression to try to make it interesting. And so I'm gonna draw myself. Let's draw my curly hair. Woo! So many curls. And I'm gonna draw myself reading to some kids. So here's me. And this hand is all excited and waving around like, yay! And this hand is going to be holding a book. So let's see, how do I draw a book? Hmm. That's kind of book shaped, right? Kind of looks like I'm holding a book. Do, 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 do. So, my hands are not perfect, and I'm rather than draw feet, I'm just gonna pretend like my legs went way off the page. But I'm pretending to hold my book here, right? My little cartoon character of me. And then I'm gonna draw some kids that I'm reading to. Bob and Sally and Joe. Doot, 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 doot. Art is not one of the gifts God has given me. But I think it's fun to do, so I do like to do it and just try to do my best and not worry about it too much. Let's make this Sally with long hair. And I'll give them a shirt to wear here. He's got his hand up, yay, so excited. I'm really bad at hands, but that's okay. I'm happy because my little people are happy. And my last little person here. We'll give him long sleeves. Chilling out, hanging, relaxing, and listening to a story read by Miss Miranda. If you want, you can add labels to your pictures or give it a title. My title is Miss Miranda can read. Boop. So that is something that I consider a gift God has given me and I am very, very thankful for it. And I like to use it to help my students by doing read alouds and reading the Bible to them and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you can draw a similar picture of yourself using a gift that God has given you, whether it is to play football or to play video games, or to play with small children and be a good babysitter, or to help your mom and dad do the dishes, whatever gift you think you have, how do you use it? Draw that picture. As brothers and sisters in one loving family, together let us pray to our Heavenly Father, we pray for the gift of understanding and tolerance in the Christian church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of wisdom for the leaders of governments and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of courage to use our God-given talents and gifts 
well. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the gift of peace in our lives and our world. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Knowing that our Heavenly Father is listening, in the silence of our hearts, let us share our own unspoken prayers with him. Loving Father, may we use the gifts that you have given us wisely so that they may bring us closer to you and your kingdom of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, our Father, who created heaven, the world, and everything. I believe his son Jesus was born to his mother Mary, and he died but came alive again on Easter, and he went to heaven to join his Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who makes us alive and fills our hearts with love and goodness. I believe heaven is full of saints, and I believe in our church for loving and serving God. And I believe when the time comes, I can be in heaven with God too. Amen. All right, friends, as you go out into the world this week, I hope you will use the gifts that God has given you in order to serve him. And remember to wash your hands frequently, wear a mask every time you leave the house, and to work for the glory of God. Have a great week.